Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. I suppose I better turn the fan off. I always forget how much the uh, twin mics on this camera pick up extraneous noises. Right, I suppose you're thinking, what's the idiot on about jigsaw puzzles? Well, the concept of a jigsaw puzzle is lots of pieces trying to get a whole picture. And our orchids are like that, except it's called knowledge rather than um, pieces of cardboard on the table. Now to me, doing a jigsaw puzzle would be the, the most tedious thing I could possibly imagine. And the only way I could get any fun out of that was if somebody put all the pieces on the table and didn't show me what the picture looked like. That might be fun. But when you got a picture on the flipping box, you're doing all that to recreate a picture full of lots of little wiggly lines. It doesn't appeal to me. Anyway, back on topic. Uh, jigsaw puzzles. Um, yesterday I mentioned I thought I might have calcium deficiency and I said I was going to go and look into it. Well, look into it I have and I was only half right. Why do I say half right? It's because calcium and magnesium work together. They're very rarely separate issues. Unless you've got a fertilizer that has got one and not the other, <laughs> which would be incredibly unusual to say the least, most fertilizers are lacking in both because they expect you to be using tap water, which in a lot of cases does contain both. But some tap water can have incredibly high calcium and hardly any magnesium so it will be out of balance but basically ca uh, calcium and magnesium work together they are incredibly important for building cell structures which make things grow and therein lies the piece of the jigsaw puzzle that was missing I've had an incredibly dry and warm and sunny April and May. This is the period when my orchids are growing at some of their most rapid rates, at which point they would need extra of both of those elements. And I've been using the standard MSU fertilizer, which across the board under virtually all conditions with RO water is brilliant but the circumstances were exceptional. So obviously my orchids are trying to put on one hell of a spurt due to the higher temperatures created by that amount of sunshine at the point where they're pushing on lots and lots of new growths. And I'll take that as an example. <clears throat> that had so much new growth on it, I was well impressed, but the result was me worrying to death that I'd got a virus. Well, looking at more precise information, shall we say, I've done a bit of homework, um, that is highly unlikely to be a virus and is far more likely to be a combination of massive amounts of new growth and at that point, higher temperatures and at that point, needing more calcium, and magnesium and it leads to those sort of patterns. I can find quite a few plants like it and some are not affected and I would suggest that those not affected are the slower growers and it's as simple as that. So all the pieces were there and I'd put a picture together with some pieces missing. Now sometimes you know, all the pieces you need to grow your orchids well, you can have some bits of the jigsaw puzzle missing and they don't matter that much. But there are times when those missing pieces become important and I think I've just had one of those times. So um, I've just gone onto eBay and ordered a product called CalMag. And the reason I chose that one over some others is that that's all that's in it. And a lot of the other products have got, oh, we've got amino acids and we've got this and we've got extra iron and we've got this. I don't want all that. I'm quite happy that that MSU fertiliser has got everything it needs under normal circumstances. But I've had none 
normal circumstances and I've had an incredibly bright sunny spring right when everything is coming into its new growth pattern you know all the nobilies are pushing out their new growths um, lots of the dendrobiums are pushing out their new growths and not many of them are affected but some are and it's as simple as that <clears throat> so that's another piece in the jigsaw puzzle that I didn't have and I've never needed before because this just hasn't happened before normally we get April is normally showery and blowy and blustery they say it comes in like a lion and goes out like a lamb as it leads into May the weather settles down a bit because we're heading towards summer um, so uh, I'm gonna try that product mixed in and see if it'll settle some of these deficiencies down um, Basically, those two elements are a main contributor in the ability to produce chlorophyll. Yeah? Well, chlorophyll's the green in your leaves. Yeah? So if there is an inability to create sufficient chlorophyll for the sheer number of new leaves that a plant's producing, it's going to lose its green, isn't it? You know, when you say it, it starts sounding obvious and almost silly. But because it hasn't happened to me before on an extent that I can visibly see, and I just want to point that one out. That's a Phalaenopsis type dendrobium. And um, I found information that out of the dendrobiums, they're the ones that suffer the worst when they're in serious active growth and the temperature starts to climb. Which in here, it only needs the sun on the glass and the temperature starts to climb. It all starts fitting into place. Like I say, I'm not, you know, I'm not going mad. It's not, it's not a miserable failure on my part or anything. It's just lack of information. And I didn't need it. Now I found a problem. I've gone away and um, hopefully I can now deal with it. But some plants are suffering quite badly. And this dendrobium is, is whoops, bashing me bulbophyllum bloom about. See that one? Those two leaves there are almost a perfect replica of some of the pictures I've just seen on the internet. You know, under a search looking at calcium and magnesium deficiencies. Yeah? Um, there's some up here. Now that's faint. But I can still see there are shadows, there are patches where the green... Come back. <laughs> where the, Well, it's actually it's better against the light. Now you can see it. You can see that the chlorophyll is not even up the leaves. There's patches where, where the shadow is of my finger now is. If I take it away, you can see there's a patch there. It's not as green. The chlorophyll is lacking in those places. Yeah? So I'm going to give that a try. <clears throat> and I've done this video and I'm going to get it posted quickly because what I was talking about in in the previous video with the watering and thinking I may have a calcium deficiency on its own could be misleading to others and you know me I don't like saying it wrong so I'm going to get this one posted and keep it short deliberately so when I get my um, new product in that will get mixed in with the MSU fertilizer and all that will do is up the calcium and the magnesium and I won't need it all the time this is just in a period where the temperatures are high and everything is in its maximum growth period normally triggered by the higher temperature quite honestly it's lots of pieces that's why I sort of tried to relate it to a jigsaw puzzle there's lots of pieces going on you know and it's like a jigsaw puzzle where the pieces change shape and if one piece changes shape some of the other pieces don't fit yeah, and they'd have to change shape as well to put the whole picture back together again. So uh, anyway, just to sort of clear that up. That brassier spike, the buds are pushing on. I don't think they're going to be very large blooms. I just got this feeling that this is a genuine miniature-ish brassier, which for once would be a bonus because they don't have to take up some space. I mean, that's my other pure brassier up there. 
I mean, look at the amount of shelf space that flipping thing takes up. Look at the monster leaves that aren't looking too good at the moment, but, I, you know, that's being rescued at the moment. I nearly lost the plant. But even those two new growths on there that are pushing on at a rate of knots are a paler green than they should be. You know, now that I've twigged, I'm seeing signs wherever I flip in look. <laughs> and some plants more than others. It's as simple as that. I mean, if you look at this Phalaenopsis, it's got signs. You know, it's got, it's got the signs. You know, uh, uh, the lowest leaf on your Phalaenopsis going yellow and dropping off is a natural phenomenon. Don't, don't panic. <laughs> as long as it's pushing some new ones out the top, old ones will fall off the bottom. And literally, if you leave them long enough, they do just fall off. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm up to. And, um, <laughs> yay! I wonder if I can zoom in on that because I'm not getting the flipping thing down. The band has just opened. That wasn't open yesterday when I watered it. It's not open properly, so you're not going to see much. Nah, not really worth it. But tomorrow or the day after, that one should be open. Uh, Woofy, uh, something different. Um, and that's a good spike on there. That's the one where I spotted a second spike coming as well. So, so that'll be good. The sad news is I'm down to one bloom on my fantastic Oncidium. <laughs> but that does mean I can now repot it, which I, I really want to do. So, uh, yeah, I've got some bits and bobs to do today. But um, I've just aired this place out so that I can enter safely. I just changed the air completely. Everything's dried out from its absolute soaking yesterday. You know, no problems with things like that. That's a Phalaenopsis with a deep crown. That crown actually holds water. See, that Phalaenopsis wouldn't hold water because it's over at an angle and the water would just run out. But that one, because it's bolt upright, does have a well, but completely dry, yeah? Um, Water in a crown for a short period when it's not cold, it'll get over it, basically. But it's not a habit I would get into. OK, I'll get this one posted. I just wanted that cleared up. So that's why I referred to it like a jigsaw puzzle. And that's what knowledge is. You get lots and lots of pieces that, when they're put together, should form a complete picture. And when it doesn't form a complete picture and you've got some bits missing, you know, yeah, find the pieces. Get that extra little bit in, and it'll it'll help you look after your orchids. But um, hopefully, this is going to be a fast delivery of this stuff, and I can get this booster into the plants. The thing I don't know definitely is where a plant like this has obviously got some problems with its chlorophyll. Will the additional elements clear it up? In other words, will those pale patches on those leaves become green again? Or, or am I stuck with them forever? Well, one way to find out. <laughs> uh, and I'll, I'll do it soon and I'll keep you posted. And a very big thank you to Bumblebee, because one of the vital pieces of information that came up in my search was a Bumblebee video. And I thought, well, we'll have a look at that. This lady knows what she's talking about. And that completed one of the pictures. As far as I'm concerned, with practical examples, sensible information, talked through in a nice way. Yeah. So thanks, Bumblebee. That, that bit about your magnesium stuff was, was excellent. And um, it added to what I'd already found out. But f from my point of view, it sort of confirmed it. At that point, I stopped looking. And I thought, right, I've got this now. I know what the problem is. Now let's go and find something to deal with it, which I've now done. Hopefully that will arrive soon. So uh, I'll see you next time. As I say, not particularly looking at anything in particular this time. This was more about stuff rather than looking at orchids. But, yep, a complete picture now on one element of growing my orchids. Extra warm temperatures in the spring on a continuous basis will lead to accelerated growth and to maintain that accelerated growth the plants need extra calcium and magnesium at that time 
Later in the year, when the growths are starting to mature, that would probably be damaging. So it's only during active growth and higher temperatures that these two deficiencies might actually show up in some orchids. Come the end of the year, I'm going to try something different on the element front because I'm going to try and get hold of a fertilizer um, that drops down the nitrogen ele element. Yeah? The idea being that, you know, orchids are just plants like anything else, and there is a process to our plants called hardening off, ready for the winter. And it is an, in an increase in <laughs> one of the other two, you know, NPK. Um, but the NPK, the bit in the middle, is actually not as um, useful as, as, as was always thought. So it's going to be the K element, whatever that is, potassium, I think. Um, whatever. Potash, that's the one. I'll get there in a minute. <laughs> potash element. So reduction in nitrogen and increase in potash has a hardening effect. Yeah? And it strengthens plants, makes, you know, soft, fleshy stuff firm up. Ready for the UK winter, when not much is going on. Yeah, so I'm going to try that. But I need to be able to find something that still works with the RO water. I may not be successful, and I may have to just put up with a reduction in feed of the same fertiliser, like I always have done. You know, and I, I've never found problems with rotting off in the winter or anything like that, so um, I'll probably be okay if I can't try that little experiment. But... That information comes from a couple of very, very good sources, um, one particularly good grower and friend, and he swears by it. And when you see his cattleyas come to the shows, because that's mainly what he grows, cattleyas and cymbidiums, and you look at his plants and you think, well, whatever he's doing, he's doing it right. So when he talks, I listen. Okay, that's this one done then. I must get this posted, and then I have got some watering to do quickly. <laughs> See you next time. Thanks for dropping by. Now that's a good growing environment. <laughs> None of this 30 on the top and less than 50 on the bottom. We're, um, I've just put the fans back on so that will, because um, the airflow effectively reduces the temperature slightly. It doesn't really, it just shows that way. But, you know, we're looking at above 22 degrees and because everything got soaking wet yesterday, we've still got lovely high humidity without the foggers even needing to do anything. So this will be a nice growing day. It looks like the sun's gonna break through in patches, which lifts the temperature. And then if necessary, the fans will kick on and bring it back down again. So this will be a nice growing day. Um, yeah, and I've just had a look round the mounts, which was what I was going to water, and quite honestly they don't need it. And the moss is still damp, and it's just literally where everything got so wet. It was all watered, and then soaked with the, um, with the chemical on top of that, so things are still wet. So, uh, dailies are not daily today. They'll be daily again tomorrow. Mm -hmm.